What's going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast. Got Jonathan Mack in the studio with me. What's up, Jonathan? Nothing much, just hanging out. I should have let what just happened roll, but we didn't because we're pros. We want it to seem crisp, but if nothing else, I'm transparent, and I want to be honest with our, our listeners in that I totally jacked the intro and started laughing and didn't have to say anything. Jonathan just stopped, reset. And we went right back in, but I hacked that up and I haven't screwed that up. I, I, it's gotta be a year. I mean, it's been a hot minute since I really tanked just on the opening line. I think I had like a mini stroke and forgot my name or something. I don't know what was going on. Nonetheless, we are here in the studio. It's a beautiful day. Um, it's the last day of August. Yeah, it's a beautiful day for now. It always ends up getting hot or humid or raining torrentially at some point during the day. Well, hey, you know, let's all give it up for, you know, we're getting in that hot time of hurricane season. So but <laughs> I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, it's been a quiet summer. This is really cool. And then on the news this morning or radio, I don't know where I heard it. It wasn't the news. I don't watch the news. Um, oh, Devin mentioned it. She's like, yeah, there's a couple like storms potentially like brewing in the Atlantic. And that always gets everybody's interest, and let's see what goes on. Yeah, let's see what storm named after a middle-aged woman could cause some devastation. <laughs> that was Jonathan. That wasn't me. That's, that's, <laughs> it is what they do. That's exactly what they do. And I Hurricane don't, Bertha. It, they need to name them something more intimidating. But Hurricane Helga. No, nah, it's, it's, ha it's hack at this it's, point to say that they need to rename hurricanes because <laughs> they do. No one's intimidated by them. Oh, my gosh. So, look, man, it's a big week. It's a really, 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 really big week. And I'm not going to kill everybody. We're talking about football every week. We're not going to do that. But it is a big week because real football kicks off this weekend. And I'm excited for it. It's going to be actually Thursday is when like legit football kicks off. And I think there's a couple games Friday and then Saturday is really like the kickoff of the college football season. Uh, Saturday night, really the only game that matters this, this week is number two versus number five, Ohio state and Notre Dame game, seven 30 ABC. I know everybody's going to be watching because everyone cares as much as me. Um, but I'm really excited about that. I am though a little disappointed in the Wilson house, Notre Dame games are big and we got certain things that we do. Certain snacks have to be present. All right. Attire, you know, they, we're together as a unit. We watch these games. Kiki hates it. She hates everything about it, but she's always got to commit at least a half to watching with us. And usually she does begrudgingly, but she's there and I appreciate the effort. My son and I though, and Devin, like hardcore fans, supporters, we are there for the duration. I don't know the last time I didn't watch a game with my son and he's going to be in the Outer Banks with his girlfriend's family this weekend. Sacrilege. I, son. And since it's Notre Dame, literally. I, right. I, son, I love you. And I want you to do your thing and live your life. I know you're getting older. We do need to talk about some decision-making skills, though. And it was fine. It was fine. Jenna, you're a great girl, but I've, I got like 17 years invested in this. And he told me, no, he's, he's going to the beach with his lady. So I'd have done the same thing. <laughs> I, I would not have, cause I have opinions about the outer banks. Uh, <laughs> Look, I'd have done the same thing. It wouldn't matter where we were going. I would have gone. If Devin's like, Hey, you want to go? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go, but I'm gonna find a TV. I'm gonna watch the game. I think Devin is sending actually with him. Um, one of our like required snacks during the game so that he has it while he's down there. So we can try to keep appearances, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I That's haven't, where we're at. I haven't missed a playoff game since like the 2008, 2009 AFC divisional game that the Steelers played. And I'll never forgive my parents for making me miss that. That's rough, but Hey, we make decisions. We got to live by them. Right. So a couple of weeks ago, um, Devin's family, you know, they're all like East Coast people for the most part. Um, and I remember when Dev and I started dating in high school. Back then, they had these like huge family reunions down in Carolina. And uh, they would go every August down to this. And and I think as some people had kind of got on in age, it seemed like that kind of waned as like the younger generations were supposed to take it over. 
and stuff. And I don't know all the details, so I could be completely wrong on that. So if I am, I apologize. But anyway, I, I stopped kind of hearing about it. Um, our lives, you know, we're getting busy. It wasn't something we really went to participated in. We're able to schedule into, um, but every year her dad, who's like this huge history buff. I mean, Donnie knows like, he knows something about dang near everything. I feel like, like he's always got a story. And I mean, he's real into like local history and like his family tree and knowing everybody and all those things. It's really, really cool when he starts telling stories about certain things. But he's done for the last several years, you know, every August, he tries to do like at least a local family reunion because like Devin's family legit's been here since like the boat landed. Like they are all just like Hampton Bucker. Like they've been here forever, Jonathan, forever. Okay. What you looking at me crazy? I didn't say which boat. <laughs> I didn't say which boat. So they've been here forever, right? And I always joke that the only reason she could marry, what you guys say, Jonathan, come on. I don't have anything what, to say. No, nothing. I have, I have nothing to, no comment. <laughs> nothing of value to add to that? <laughs> Certainly nothing of value. <laughs> so um, anyway, the, the joke always is she had to marry me because I'm not from here. And her family's been in the area so long, she's probably related to everybody. And so they do a thing. They all get together or whatever. And, and sometimes we're in town and make it. Sometimes we don't. I hadn't been in a hot minute. Well, anyway, a couple of weeks ago, uh, they have an impromptu get together with some cousins and things like that. And some people could make it. Some people couldn't. We, we were available. We were in town. So we went. Um, and so we're talking. And my father-in-law threw me off a little bit. He comes up to me. And he says to me, um, well, he's asking me about traveling because he knows I'm, I'm traveling a lot and doing different things. He's like, Josh, so we thinking about retiring? Like, we thinking about retiring soon? You know, kind of slowing down, wrapping it up. It was something along those lines. And I kind of laughed. And I, I was like, no, absolutely not. Uh, absolutely not, Donnie. I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't. And I may have said it on the show at some point in the past. I'm like, I'll never retire. I'll just die. Like one day, that's that's what it'll be. The day the dogs and, start stop barking. Yeah, the, day, the well, at least to me they will, because I'll be <laughs> I won't be hearing them. Um, but it's like I never see myself, and I told Devin this a couple of years ago, and um, and I had to explain it a little bit because I was like, I don't think I'll ever retire. I think I'll just drop dead, and I think that and I don't mean that like oh I want to be grinding 20 hours a day and, and doing that's not what I mean what I mean is I love the process and what it entails and the involvement and and what we're building you know isn't something for a minute and when I'm done building it we're done as a unit building it that I'm just gonna you know all right, it's done we're not training any dogs anymore we're not moving forward anymore no we're building something that that I want to be generational you know, I want it to last. And, and if my family's involved with it, you know, Logan right now is expressing an interest. I want to be involved with it to a certain extent. I I'm working very hard. The team is working hard right now to rip, to replace me in a lot of aspects, because as, as I've said before, I want to be the worst trainer in my organization. I, I want to find people who are way better from an operation standpoint. People are way better from a from a, um, a leadership standpoint, a developmental standpoint, I, I want to replace myself in all of these areas that I am because I don't believe that I'm the greatest at it. I want to build as such to where I can afford to bring in such great talent that will be able to impact more lives, more families, more dogs, um, you know, and, and build something that's going to last. I love that process. And if we are successful over the next several years and decades doing that, there's no point where I'm just like, Hey, I'll see you later. Cause I'm going to want to be involved weekly in some way, shape or form. Maybe it's still vision casting. Maybe it's just checking in. Cause I want to see what we're doing. I want to, I want to be able when I'm 70, 80, 90 years old more to look back and see, hell yeah. Look at all the people we've impacted. Look at all the good works that we're able to do in the communities where we're involved in like, and it, so, so retired, no, you know, and it's, it, it just got me thinking about some other things like, well, to what end, like to, to what, end? like there, there is no end. There is no end. 
every time we reach a new level of what we define as success or, or a win, that to me just takes the roof off of something. I'm like, man, what is, what is capable now? And that continues to drive me and, and move forward. Um, you know, it's funny, my, my father-in-law, he was a Marine or he is a Marine. Marines are always Marines. He was a Marine. Uh, then he went civil service and he was in the fire department and on his days off, he, he did small engine repair and different stuff. He had a, a small engine repair business with his brother for a long time. Like the dude is a worker and, and, and he did retire from the fire department. And then he ended up going and working for the city and ended up retiring from there. Like this dude's got multiple <laughs> retirements, right? And now they're able to in, enjoy that time and do what they want to do, what works for them. And it's, it's awesome. I mean, that guy is a worker. He is a worker. And I think my mother-in-law appreciated it. It's like, okay, good. He went back to work. Like he was home and like, you're going to go get another job and then retire again because he was around all the time. So I think that was good that he got out of the house <laughs> for a little more time. But like, so there was a, an end date to those things. We're like, boom, I'm going to hit this mark. I have retired. I'm done. What's that next chapter? And I don't think that there is an, there's no end to this book. I think as we approach what's looking like uh, final chapters, I think life is going to be writing the next one. And we're, we're seeing what we can build. This hasn't been done before. And the team that we have, it's really exciting to see. So I think about to what end. There, there, there is no end. It's impact. And if we really want to impact people, whether they're coming on our team to work or it's, it's families and dogs that we're, that we're helping, whatever it may be, how could I ever say we've helped enough? How could I say that, well, we've supported that organization who's, you know, helping kids and putting food on, you know, impoverished families' tables, doing these different things. Uh, that's enough. We don't need to do that anymore. Well, did, is every hungry kid no longer hungry? I, I'm pretty sure there's still a hungry kid out there. I'm still sure there's a, a kid who has no shoes. I'm still sure there's, you know, a wife that's uh, or a woman that's getting abused who needs help getting out of a situation. I'm pretty sure like at, to what end, to what, I, I don't know. I don't know. And so in my mind, it's just kind of how I'm focused and, and wrapping around. And it's, it's like, it just keeps motivating me and increase increasing the drive. Right. And so, and, and with the different seasons that you go through, I, I'm more excited today than I've ever been. And I say that all the time and it doesn't matter what things are going great or things are going really shitty. I feel like just the new challenge and the new adventure, it's like, man, we're just getting started. And I want to have that same fire in 20 years and 30 years. And I'm young, I'm young. And so it just threw me off the other day when he asked me, so you thinking about, retiring, wrapping that thing up. I was like, it just, it, it threw me off a little bit. I mean, I love that he sees it that way and thinks that what we've built can allow for that. And that's really cool. And years ago, you know, I kind of thought I was like, man, these kids will graduate. Dev and I just get a little property somewhere and we'll just go chill in the woods. Yeah. That's the furthest thing, you know, from my mind right now. Um, it's still a part of that vision, but it is the furthest thing from the, from my mind. And so I just, I love that, um, that conversation just got me fired up just thinking about stuff in a good way, not in a, not in a bad way. And I love that, that they're thinking about, cause I've got friends who are retiring right now. They went military, like right out of high school and they're retiring. And that's kind of a trip because they've been in 20 some odd years retiring. And I'm like, what? So my little brother's friends, they're retiring from the military or other stuff that they've gone on to do. I'm like, Oh damn. Yeah. They've been doing this 20 years, 25 years. A lot of people retire at that point and then go on to second careers or, or do whatever. And so it's a little weird being at that age where some people are having closure to certain chapters. And I was like, well, technically I retired from my real estate career <laughs> when I went bankrupt and lost everything. I count that as a retirement. So maybe my closures and uh, transitions just happened a little quicker than some other people's. But to what end? To what end are you doing what you're doing, right? Um, that's, just, that's just a statement that kind of keeps coming to my mind as I think about this stuff. Um, you familiar with um, 
I'm sure you've seen this. This was viral maybe last year, the last couple months. Uh, Georgia Tech strength coach. Um, there was a there was a clip that went around, and he was talking about you know lazy people do a little work and they 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 think they should be winning, but winners work as hard as possible and still worry if they're being lazy. You ever seen this clip? Uh, I've never seen the clip, but I've heard the quote. Heard the quote. Okay, and I remember hearing that. And this guy, he he's their strength and conditioning coach. And this guy's just dropping like fire all the time like he's trying to lead these young men you know through the program at georgia tech or whatever and sometimes there's people record sometimes there's not but it's always got good stuff and really great content and i thought about that i was like man that is so so freaking true and because i don't consider myself lazy actually i think inherently i am super lazy um and so i have to check myself in and like get to work on things but it <laughs> People are always like, aren't you going to take a break or is it time to rest? And that's what that you thinking about retiring soon kind of spurred because people say that to me all the time. You're traveling a lot. You know, you, you, when are you going to stop? When's that going to stop? When is enough enough? What, how, again, to what end? When have we impacted enough? When have we done enough? And I'm not saying you listening should be doing more or have to do more, but you have to know what that end looks like for you. And for me, I don't know what it looks like. Well, also, I just think that most people envision an end or look for an end because they don't really enjoy what they're doing, to be completely frank with you. You're exactly right. And that's what I'm saying. To what end? What does that look like? It's like, why? 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 If you dread every day and it's like, this is the end. I just got to get to this. Why are you consumed? with that thought process rather than thinking about what decision do I need to make right now to get to something that I don't necessarily want to end. Cause if every day is that I just need five o'clock to get here instead of that consuming your mind, what do you need to do to change that situation completely? To where it's like, hey, I'm not dreading shit. I got to go. I got to be at work. I got to do whatever. Oh, it's five o'clock. Thank God I'm out of here. Like that, I just cannot imagine being in that cycle. But that is a cycle that so many people are in. You know them. I know them. We grew up with them. Like that's just the reality of it. Energy is spent either way. Effort is spent. Stress is there. Dissatisfaction is there. Why not take that energy and put it towards what? you need to do if you don't have a why for what you're doing what do you need to do to get towards a why that you care about right so if there's no why what needs to happen to get you towards the why you care about don't get stuck in that rut just because that's everybody has to do but everybody's like well i got bills coming up well i've got this well you're gonna have those things anyway well it's too hard to make a switch to do something different yeah it's hard going to the job that you hate anyway So what do you need to do? What decision do you need to make to get towards the why that matters to you? The why that matters to me, I don't have 100% clarity on it. And maybe I do, honestly. Maybe it's just impact. Impact is my, my why. Impact for my family. Impact for our teams. Impact you know, for our communities. And how do I feel we best impact all of these things? And it's by me trying to do my best every day to continue to grow our businesses, develop people. And I know I can impact my family better. I know that I can impact our teams better. I know that I can impact our communities better. So maybe that is, maybe that is my why. Maybe my why is impact. If I had to simple it down to to one word and impact is super broad. There's nothing specific to that. But again, I come to what end. I, I don't know. I find it super hard to say it's enough. What is enough? What's enough income? What's enough savings? What's enough investments? What's enough generosity? What? Hell if I know. And people are like, ah, money, it's not that important. It's because you don't have any. It's most people who think that. And the reality is, if you want to impact things in a large way and really make change, unfortunately, this society that we're in requires money 
That's it. So you can't get on this whole thing of money's a root of blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but the world we're in, that's what's required. And if you have it, you have the ability to impact things because money impacts things. It absolutely does. There's a really good Wu Tang song that kind of lays out the principles of how uh, you know the world works. You want to help him with that one, Jonathan? Uh, this is just cash rules everything around me. Cream, Cream get the money, the dollar dollar bills, y'all. <laughs> and that's what twenty years old at this point, maybe twenty five. Before I, was I mean, born. it's it it's it's the truth, and it doesn't mean go out here chasing money and doing crap like that. What you doing? But if you're working with purpose. You're actually working with 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 joy, purpose towards that why. You're gonna find all of these things start to kind of flow together. And so for me, it's that impact piece. What is the why for you? Now, the thing that kind of torments me though with that is, damn. When, when I'm 75, 80. I feel like I want to rest a little bit, <laughs> right? Well, and so it's, but I find it so hard because I don't feel not rested now. I'm just excited. I don't ever want to not be excited. Uh, I'm, I've been trying to live uh, by some wisdom that I heard that simply uh, don't project your present on your past. So like mm-hmm. if you're if you're 80 and you think, oh, well, I'd like to rest now, like maybe I should have rested back then. Like you can't project your present yep. on your past in any way, shape or form. Oh, that's deep. I like that. I feel that for sure. And that's where I think a lot of, um, you know, my family, they're workers. And we talked about this. And a lot of them stopped working. And, and you hear that all the time. All right, someone worked all these years, 50 years, 60 years is whatever, retired, dropped dead six months later, dropped dead, you know, a year later, worked, 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 worked. And that's why I do like doing a lot of things now, doing things with my family and, and taking trips and, and doing different things because I want to have experiences because I don't think you should work for 50 years and then go do all the things you want to do with your life. And you're hoping that you're still healthy enough to do it. You're hoping that you were able to save enough money to do it and all these things. Like no one's promised tomorrow. Right. So I, I think it's very important that like to be living your life in the moment, doing things that you want to do. That's, that's appropriate and, and responsible, but you, you can't wait. Cause you just don't know what's going to happen then. And, but I do have that concern of man. It's like, man, you just stopped doing everything. One, I think Devin would leave me if I was just around all the time she's like no you got you you need something to do um but just the why is so big i just can't see having an end to that and that's what i want to just kind of challenge you guys you know with today what's what is that about to what to what end if if you you're not working towards your why personally and professionally what needs to change to get you towards that. What needs to change to get you working towards your why? Life is tough. Life is great. There's good days and bad days. These things are going to come and go anyway. Are you putting yourself in a situation where you dread every day, which is going to be hard, or are you putting yourself in a situation to make changes? Or you're working towards stuff that you care about. Hard's going to come anyway. To what end? Let us know what you think about the episode, share it, comment, leave reviews. We appreciate you guys for listening. Um, Go Irish. We'll catch you all next week on the Big Dog Podcast.